The Bible describes Satan as an angelic adversary of God, and by extension, the adversary and opponent of those who follow God. Despite the fact that everything God created was good, Satan chose to rebel against the Lord, and many other angels joined him. In the Garden of Eden, Satan tempted Eve to sin, and Adam followed her into sin, cursing the entire human race. In the Bible, Satan is referred to by a variety of names. Number 1. Satan Fifty-two times in Scripture this being is defined as Satan. Job chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. One day the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came with them. The Lord said to Satan, Where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, From roaming throughout the earth, going back and forth on it. The Lord called a heavenly conference for his angels and invited Satan to attend. This indicates for the time being, God in his wisdom has decided not to completely exclude Satan from his presence. This will happen when he is judged and thrown into the lake fire. On this particular occasion, Satan had been roaming the earth, no doubt looking for someone to devour. Satan was the shining morning star until the moment of his personal sin. Even more amazing is Ezekiel's description of him. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Satan appears to have been God's angel in command. However, he grew tired of worshipping God and desired to be his own God, running his own show. As a result, every time you try to run your own life, be your own boss and act as your own God, you are essentially saying to Satan, Satan, I agree with you. I too want to ascend to heaven and rule the world. Number 2. Daystar This creature is referred to as the Daystar in Isaiah. The concept is bearer of light. Lucifer is the Latin translation of this name. This was Satan's name before his fall. Isaiah chapter 14 verses 13 through 15 For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. The Lord Jesus is the true day star and bearer of light. Revelation Chapter 22, verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you and to give you assurance of these things for the churches. I am the root, the source, the life, and the offspring of David, the radiant and bright morning star. The true light is Jesus. John chapter 1, verse 9. There it was, the true light, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light, which coming into the world enlightens everyone. Number 3. Son of the Morning He is also known as the Son of the Morning. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. How you have fallen from heaven, morning star, son of the dawn! You have been cast down to the earth, you who once laid low the nations. Number 4. The Anointed Cherub This angel was also referred to as the Anointed Cherub. Ezekiel chapter 28 verses 13 and 14 You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The sardius, topaz and diamond, beryl, onyx and jasper, sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold. The workmanship of your timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers. I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. 
He walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. Number 5. The Devil This is one of the most common names for this persona. It is only found in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. The devil literally translates as slanderer. This is because Satan slanders both God and humanity. He slandered God's character in the Garden of Eden. Genesis chapter 3 verses 2 to 5 And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He is now accusing believers. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10. Number 6. Tempter. The one who tempts people to sin is Satan. He wishes to elicit the worst in each of us. Matthew chapter 4 verses 1 through 3. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted forty days and forty nights, after he was hungry. Now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. Number 7. Ruler of Demons This evil figure is known as a demon ruler. But the Pharisees said, By the ruler of the demons he drives out demons. Matthew chapter 9 verse 34 Number 8. Beelzebul Satan is also referred to as Beelzebul, which means Lord of the Flies or Lord of Dung. But when the Pharisees heard it, they said, It is only by Beelzebul, the ruler of the demons, that this fellow casts out the demons. Matthew chapter 12, verse 24. Number 9. The Evil One Satan is also known as the Evil One. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. Matthew chapter 13 verse 19. Number 10. Enemy. He is humanity's adversary. Matthew chapter 13 verses 37 to 39. And he answered and said to them, he who sows the good seed is the Son of Man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom, but the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Number 11. Liar and Murderer Jesus stated unequivocally that Satan is a liar. As a result, the title liar is appropriate. John chapter 8 verse 44 You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. Number 12 father of liars the devil is revealed as the father of lies in the same verse and they rejected jesus because he told the truth in other words their opposition to jesus was motivated by satan they wanted to emulate their father's actions children like their father this explained everything they did number 13 ruler of this world Satan is the ruler of this world, because the world is still distinguished by sin. Jesus said, 
I will not say much more to you, for the prince of this world is coming. He has no hold over me, but he comes so that the world may learn that I love the Father and do exactly what my Father has commanded me. Come now, let us leave. John chapter 14 verses 30 to 31 When Adam and Eve sinned, they relinquished their roles as king and queen, ruling over creation on God's behalf, and gave it to Satan. As a result, the devil is appropriately referred to as the ruler of this world, the god of this age. He wields the power of death and uses the fear of death to keep people in slavery. Hebrews chapter 2 verses 14 and 15. But Satan had no power over Jesus because he was sinless. God's son became a man in order to defeat the devil as a man and restore God's kingdom rule. And he would accomplish this through his love for the Father and obedience to what the Father commanded. This title implies that he wields significant power in our world. According to the Bible, he has control over the entire world. We know that we are of God, and the whole world lies in the evil one. 1 John chapter 5, verse 19. Number 13. God of this age. He is also called the God of this present age, whose minds the God of this age is blinded, who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your bondservants for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 Verses 4 to 6. When people reject the gospel, the truth becomes obscured to them. Their spiritual darkness is aided by the devil, the God of this age, who has blinded the minds of unbelievers, preventing them from believing the gospel of Christ's glory. This serves as a reminder that we are fighting against evil, spiritual forces in the heavens, not against flesh and blood. As a result, Paul realized he couldn't win this battle by proclaiming himself as Lord, but rather Jesus Christ as Lord. Only God can bring light out of darkness. He shines spiritual light into darkened hearts to give sinners the light of the knowledge of God's glory in the face of Jesus, just as he created visible light at the dawn of creation. Number 14. Serpent 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 2-4 to four. I am jealous for you with a godly jealousy. I promised you to one husband to Christ, so that I might present you as a pure virgin to him. But I am afraid that just as Eve was deceived by the serpent's cunning, your minds may somehow be led astray from your sincere and pure devotion to Christ. For if someone comes to you and preaches Jesus other than the Jesus we preached, or if you receive a different spirit from the spirit you received, or a different gospel from the one you accepted, you put up with it easily enough. He had a godly jealousy for them, which drove him to silence the false teachers who were deceiving them once and for all. In the gospel, Paul was their spiritual father, and the Corinthians were like a pure virgin whom he had promised to a husband, Jesus Christ. But Paul was concerned that they would be led astray from a pure devotion to Christ by the devil, the serpent, because they were willing to put up with false teaching, which amounted to another Jesus, a different spirit, a different gospel. Number 16. Angel of Light He seems to be an angel of light, for such people are false apostles, deceitful workers, masquerading as apostles of Christ. And no wonder, for Satan himself masquerades as an angel of light. It is not surprising, then, if his servants also masquerade as servants of righteousness. Their end will be what their actions deserve. 2 Corinthians 
chapter 11, verses 13 to 15. These opponents are labeled as false apostles and deceitful workers by Paul. They were devilish imposters, not Christians. As Satan disguises himself as a light angel in order to deceive and corrupt, these false teachers pretended to be servants of righteousness. However, Paul promises that God will judge them based on their actions. Number 17. Belial Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? Or what does a believer have in common with an unbeliever? 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 to 15 Paul exhorts them not to have intimate fellowship with unbelievers, citing several Old Testament passages for support. Some Corinthians were doing this with Jewish false teachers who were opposing Paul and causing strife in the church. To become partners with translates as to be unequally yoked. The idea comes from Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 10, where the Israelites were told not to plow with an ox and a donkey. What is true for animals is true for humans. An unholy union results from close relationships or partnerships between believers and unbelievers. After all, what do a believer and an unbeliever have in common? Such compromise whether in a romantic relationship, an intimate friendship, or a business partnership, has a negative impact on your intimacy with God. When you align yourself with those whose beliefs and lives are diametrically opposed to God's, you will find God distancing Himself from you as well. Number 18. Ruler of the Authority of the Air He is the ruler of the current evil world system. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 to 3. Outside of Jesus Christ, everyone is spiritually dead, separated from God, and the graveyard's name is trespasses and sins. Paul describes the three locks on the coffins that keep people there in verses 2 and 3. The world, the ways of this world, the devil, the ruler of the power of the air, and the flesh, our fleshly desires. We couldn't make or find a way out of that cemetery because our situation was so dire. We were wrathful children, subjects of Satan's kingdom and God's judgment. Number 19. Adversary This being is opposed to everything holy. The word Satan signifies adversary. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 8 Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that the family of believers throughout the world is undergoing the same kind of sufferings. And the God of all grace, who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while, will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Peter concludes with a warning. Be on the lookout for the devil and resist him. When you crossed over from Satan's domain to Christ's kingdom, you became a target. The devil prowls around like a roaring lion in search of food. He wants to keep you from furthering God's kingdom on earth. So don't think you can get away with it. He intends to annihilate you. So maintain your faith. Remember that only through your faith in and obedience to Jesus Christ can you defeat Satan. The God of all grace will restore, establish, strengthen, and support you through Christ.
He has complete dominion. You do not require any other security policy. Number 20. Roaring Lion In the same verse, he is compared to a lion on the prowl for prey. Number 21. Dragon The dragon is a name given to Satan. And the great dragon was cast down, the old serpent, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Revelation chapter 12 verse 9 The term dragon is associated with those who oppose God. Number 22. Old Serpent He is also referred to as the Old Serpent. And the great dragon was cast down, the Old Serpent, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Again, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. This reminds us of the Garden of Eden, when Satan appeared to Adam and Eve as a serpent. It demonstrates his cunning. Number 23. Deceiver of the Whole World The unbelieving world is duped by this fallen angel. And the great dragon was cast down, the old serpent, he that is called the devil and Satan, the deceiver of the whole world. He was cast down to the earth, and his angels were cast down with him. Again, Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. This being is all about deception. He is the master deceiver. Number 24. Accuser of God's People This evil character is constantly accusing God's people. Then I heard a loud voice in heaven proclaiming, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Messiah. For the accuser of our comrades has been thrown down, who accuses them day and night before our God. Revelation chapter 12 verse 10.